Hello everyone and welcome to today's video on Introduction to Identity and Access Management also known as IAM. Monitoring usage of corporate data and access to privileged information had been a daunting task before the advent of IAM. Encompassing numerous APIs, single sign-on frameworks and data handling policies, IAM has established itself as a key component of every IT department. But how does it enforce these rules and who are the key benefactors of these policies? What about the advantages of these frameworks and the workflow of these systems? We are here today to answer these questions. Let's take a look at some of the topics to be covered today. We start by learning about IAM, that is Identity and Access Management from a surface level so as to put a clear idea of what it is. Next, we cover the general workflow and process of how IAM works. Moving on. We cover some of the tools that find their place in an IAM framework and are crucial components. Finally, we go through some of the advantages of the IAM, learning what makes them a lucrative deal for organizations. So let's get started by learning about IAM from a surface level perspective. Identity and Access Management or IAM is a set of processes, policies and tools for defining and managing the roles and access privileges of individual network entities to a variety of cloud and on-premise applications. The users can include customers, partners, employees, devices like computers, smartphones, routers, etc. The core objective of IAM systems is one digital identity per individual or item. Once the digital identity has been established, it must be maintained, modified and monitored throughout each user's or device's access lifecycle. Access and user are two vital IAM concepts. Access refers to the actions permitted to be done by a user, like view, create, or change a file. Users could be employees, partners, suppliers, contractors, or even customers. Furthermore, employees can be further segmented based on their roles. IAM systems are designed to perform three key tasks, identify, authenticate, and authorize, meaning that only the right person should have access to computers, hardware, software apps, any IT resources, etc. For the entry of new users or the changing of the roles of existing users, the list of access privileges must be up to date all the time. IAM functions usually fall under IT departments or section that handle cybersecurity and data management. Now that we understand the importance of IAM in today's cybersecurity sphere, let us understand the process of this framework. We have multiple components that aid this process. Let's start by going through each of them individually. Principal is an entity that can perform actions on an AWS resource or any cloud management system. A user, a role, or an application can be a principal. It's always the principal who raises a concern to access or modify data on servers, serving as the first point of contact in the IAM workflow. Authentication is the process of confirming the identity of the principal trying to access the product. The principal must provide its credentials or required keys for authentication. This step can be further enhanced by multiple authentication factors and geologs among other things. Once the identity is confirmed, the principal has the ability to view the data behind the wall of security and take the necessary steps. When it comes to requests, a principal then sends a request to the cloud management system specifying the action and which resource should perform it. In this step, the user can ask to modify, delete, edit or affect other users in this particular bucket of organization by changing the data or the information. When it comes to authorization, it carries out the rest of an organization identity and access management processes once the user has been authenticated. Users are granted authorizations according to their role at an organization. The practice is referred to as Role-Based Access Control or RBAC. Authorizations determine a role's resources and level of access in the network. These items may include systems, applications, file shares, printers, and more. For example, an accounting department employee who regularly works with payroll software must be authorized to do such. If authentication resembles a passport, these are the things your digital identity can access with it. While authentication is fully straightforward, authorizations and their management are far more challenging. Authorizations consist of complex set of rules and policies and groups which are permitted explicitly configured per user account. 
With the working of IAM frameworks out of the way, let's cover some of the tools that these systems work on. SSO is an IAM tool that enables a user to log into one an organization's properties and automatically be logged into a design set of other properties. For example, when you log into Google, you're automatically logged into your Gmail and your YouTube accounts. Similarly for users, single sign-on reduces friction since they don't have to keep track of different credentials for every application. For organizations, SSO helps in collecting valuable insights about user behavior and preferences since it tags them as they move from one application to another connected by one single login. Next is Multi-Factor Authentication or MFA. Implementing multi-factor authentication is crucial to protect your organization's data from malicious intrusions and virtually every IAM platform offers some form of MFA. However, it's equally crucial to customize MFA with the appropriate level of security. For example, in business-to-consumer scenarios, you need to consider UX and try not to create unnecessary friction for users who don't want to be subjected to heightened scrutiny every time they log in. For workforce IAM, you may want a more stringent MFA since the consequences of an unauthorized party gaining access to your private network can be so devastating. A modern IAM solution will allow you to implement MFA only when it's needed. This can be accomplished through setup authentication or adaptive authentication in which users only trigger MFA if they are trying to access sensitive data or their behavior is flagged as risky. In the past few years, identity has become the preferred gateway for hackers to break into systems. Brute force attacks, credential stuffing attacks, and even highly targeted phishing campaigns are all attempts by hackers to break in through a company's front door, which is the login box. There are multiple ways IAM systems can help detect and mitigate these malicious attacks. IAM solutions detect attacks by monitoring signals such as the velocity of traffic, detection of login patterns that differ from a user's routine, use of a breached password, use of devices and IP addresses with a poor reputation, among other things. These are some of the most widely used tools when it comes to IAM frameworks. But why do we go through setting up so many tools and firewalls? Let's go through some of the advantages of using IAM systems in both corporate and consumer environments. IAM solution helps identify and mitigate security risks. You can use IAM to identify policy violations or remove inappropriate access privileges without having to search through multiple distributed systems. We can also leverage IAM to ensure that security measures are in place to meet regulatory and auditing requirements. IAM provides a common platform for access and identity management information. You can apply the same security policies across all the operating systems and devices used by the organization. The IAM framework can help you enforce policies related to user authentication, privileges and validation and attend to the privilege creep problems. IAM simplifies sign-up and user management processes for application owners, end users, and system administrators. It makes it simple to provide and manage access and promotes user satisfaction. IAM services can also lower operating costs. Using federated identity services means you no longer need local identities for external users. This makes application administration easier. Cloud-based IAM services can reduce the need to buy and maintain on-premise infrastructure. Hope you learned something new today. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Subscribe to our channel for more info video videos like this and thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.